Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Donation with Gift of Hope. I'm your host, Olivia Fox, and I am a community outreach specialist with Gift of Hope Organ and Tissue Donor Network. Um, this is an interactive show where you can call in and ask myself and all of the awesome expert guests that I have lined up for the season any questions that you have in regards to organ and tissue donation. This is going to be very interactive, very informative, and also very fun, um, this whole show and this whole season. So I'm really excited um, for tonight. You can also catch us streaming live uh, online at cantv.org forward slash hotline. And um, just like I said, this is a call-in number, so feel free throughout the next 25 minutes to give us a call at 312-738-1060. Again, that's 312-738-1060, and that's listed right below me um, in the little message bar. So this evening, I'm so, so excited to invite a very special guest and introduce a very special guest who is actually my mentor, my boss, and the director of the Community Affairs Department at Gift of Hope. Mr. Jack Lynch. Welcome, Jack. Well, thank you very much. So happy to have you here tonight, Jack. I'm honored to be here, Thanks. and I appreciate the intro. Thanks for coming. I know you're a Can TV veteran. Yeah. Um, I'm a newbie. Our viewers know this is only my second week, but we had a lot of fun last week, right? So we're really excited to have you here tonight and hear some of your expertise. I'm delighted, and there are new digs here. There. Quite impressive. It's looking pretty good. You see our logo in the back. We I got do. some graphics going. We're I fancy do. here, right? And you. Hey. I mean, let's get it on. Yes, let's let's have a good show tonight. So um, I'm really excited to have you, to, you here tonight because, as I mentioned, you are the director and my boss of the Community Affairs Department at Gift of Hope. And before the last, I'd say, four years, you actually were the Community Affairs Department with Gift of Hope. So can you tell me a little bit about your, um, I don't know if you want me to tell the number of years that you've been with the organization. Oh, that's okay. I dyed my hair this morning. But let's just say it's since uh, since they started, since before they were called sure. Gift of Hope. So can you talk to us about that? Well, Gift of Hope started back in 1987 as a result of some federal uh, guidelines and protocols that were put into place. So there are 57 agencies such as Gift of Hope across the country. We're the fourth largest or fifth largest in the country. We have approximately 300 employees. And our service area consists of two-thirds of the state of Illinois and all of Northwest Indiana, meaning the Lake County of Indiana. My primary focus is I've gotten away from a lot of the day-to-day -day in terms of working with potential donor families in the hospital and offering them the option of donation. So I'm a lot more administrative now, and um, being a member of the executive team, making sure that the achievements that we have uh, worked hard to achieve through the years. And since I have to say it, let's see, since 1987 to now, I think that's a little bit over 30 years, or right at 30 years. That's but about right. You guys make us do our history lessons at Gift of Hope. It was 30, it's been 30 years. Was that part of the orientation? That was part okay. of it. <laughs> but we've come a ways, and we've saved a lot of lives along the way. So I'm very honored to uh, be able to say to your viewing audience, the work isn't done yet. There are thousands of individuals yet waiting. So we've got to do a better job of being innovative, uh, changing the end of the story when death does occur so that we can save more lives through the donation of organs. And I'm overly simplifying it, but the fact of the matter is that it is actually very gratifying to be able to make a difference in the lives of patients who are waiting. I definitely agree, and I mean, what we do every day, I tell you sometimes I have to pinch myself when I wake up and think, is this my job? Do I really get to do all of this cool stuff, something have a TV show, doing. something I enjoy yeah. doing, and mm -hmm. then also make a difference in the community, and then educate um, my peers and the people that look like me and everyone around in our service area about the, the Well, I think we've come a ways. Um, some 25 plus years ago when we started this, we would participate in the second largest parade in this country, and that is, as you all know, the Babilton Day Parade. And I will tell you in the beginning, back then, we never made the entire parade route for the first four years. I mean, the comments were uh, quite offensive, and if we had small children in the car that were waiting for transplants, they were just uh, stunned and, and petrified. So we pulled out of the parade. 
But here we are some 30 years later, and rather than just waiting on that to change on its own, we've gotten very much involved in the communities. And now people run to our vehicles or showing their driver's license. So we've come a long ways and we're saving more lives. Good. So I think that that kind of leads me to one of my first questions, um, and and that you have identified that it's really important that we do that grassroots um, outreach, have those grassroots outreach efforts, and make sure that we're in the community, and Absolutely. make sure that we're involved in everything that's good going on in the community. Absolutely. So how did you kind of identify that as a way to um, spread this message and share this message of importance within um, a community that might not believe in it or might not think that it's something that benefits Well, I, I, I think your lead-in is interesting, but I would offer you this, is that it was not so much that the community shared that viewpoint that we were not going to be participants, but the community, in my opinion, has never, ever, ever been asked. We were always told what we were going to be sure. or what we were not going to be. Sure. I think more than anything, what we have done is empower the community. Let people become a bigger part of the solution. It didn't matter, and it does not matter, about your social economic strata, where you stand financially. What matters is that people are dying. These are people that, if you don't see them in the mirror, they certainly live on your block within a two-block radius of your home. So I think what we simply did was empower people and say to them, let no one make decisions about you without you. So our message has been a bold one, but it's one that resonates well with the community. Thank you. So uh, my next question is, what do you think has been the biggest, um, maybe not event, but outreach effort that has been done by Gift of Hope in the Community Affairs, in the community affairs Department um, in regards to outreach in the community. What are some of the big things that, that have gone on in, throughout history? Because I know what has gone on since I've been there, but what are some of the, the milestones um, throughout, throughout well, the time? Well, I think a couple things, and uh, certainly uh, working with celebrities has is its role in our efforts. Uh, I think when Walter Payton was waiting for a liver transplant, and then it was determined that he was really not a candidate, and yet a lot of visibility went on, went along with Walter's plight. Because initially it was suggested that he had AIDS and he did not have AIDS, but in fact, he had cancer in the hepatic portal vein, which leads in, uh, from, the, uh, from the liver. And he was never ever going to be a candidate for a liver transplant, but initially until all the workup is done, you wouldn't have known that. But all the visibility that went along with uh, his effort uh, all the way through his death and up to this day probably was one of the more significant things. Um, I guess the second thing has to do with uh, Michael Jordan. And uh, through a friend of mine, we, I had Michael Jordan ask if he would do a commercial for us. Strangely enough, uh, two weeks later, I get a phone call at the office during the uh, period that Michael was still with the uh, Bulls, and he called me, and he said, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And so I think we've had uh, those type of scenarios. I, I cannot tell you how important it was to have Minister Louis Farrakhan come on and be a supporter, and his comments resonated well, even if you were not Muslim here in this country. So. The highs have been many. Uh, the negatives, certainly, we've experienced them. and But I think along the way, we've changed some attitudes and we've saved some lives. Uh, as you stated in the beginning, what better tribute could one such as myself have than to know you've made a difference for others? That's very true. Um, so in talking about celebrity in this industry, I think it's really important for us to um, understand that that some working with someone like Michael Jordan is yeah. is is important because they have a platform in which we can sure. share something that is, you know, it, it touches so many different people. So I think that we need to understand that celebrity has no kind of bearing on 
you know, yeah. anything in regards to this industry besides sharing the message. Um, uh, kind of a hot, hot topic uh, that's been going on in our industry lately has been the secretary or the superintendent of police. Absolutely. Um, and his need for a kidney transplant and understanding, um, you know, how long he has been waiting and what he has been through. But then also that he did receive a living donor. And that is why he was able to um, kind of get his donor donation so quick while the waiting list is so long. So I think that that's something maybe we should talk about and Absolutely. kind of clarify for people because people are like, oh, well, if somebody's a celebrity, if they're well known, you know, I think your, they might have your some concern advantage. and your question that you're conveying to the viewing audience is very important. You being a celebrity or you being well uh, known and viewed and seen often in various forms of the media has no basis in terms of how long you do or do not wait on the list. Right. The average wait on the kidney list, which is the organ that is needed in great numbers by our community, the average wait is five years. In the superintendent's case, um, he was able to get a kidney almost right away. In fact, it was right away once uh, his numbers uh, in terms of his kidney function began to drop off drastically. It was clear that he could no longer hold out. And he has held out for some 20 plus years waiting uh, before he let it be known that he was waiting. And it was his son that kept him from waiting. His son, I mean, as you all know, we are born with two kidneys. His son was in the position of saying, Dad, you gave me life, let me help extend your life. And in fact, that's why the superintendent and so many like the superintendent did not have to wait on a donor organ. And I actually met someone this weekend. We had a booth at the Chicago Marathon Expo and I met a man um, who told me he was in his 60s and he told me that he had given his wife a kidney 30 years ago and he yeah. was getting ready to run the marathon yeah. the next day. And so he said that he just wanted everybody to know that you can be a living donor and, and, and live and fine, fine. fine. And, and live sure. a great, healthy sure. life. So sure. that's something that I definitely want our viewers to know. So definitely I just want to remind everyone to um, register as an organ donor. That's our call to action this week and every week if you're not already registered on your driver's license to be an organ donor you can definitely go, go on over to giftofhope.org and register it'll take you 20 seconds to register um, if this is something that you would like to do if this is a gift that you would like to leave here on this earth that once God chooses that it's your time to go. You should definitely register as an organ donor and, uh, you know, kind of make that wish known for your family so that that's one less thing they have to think about. I, I, I think it's important to point out for your audience this, and that is this point, is that when I started in transplantation or in this area of health care, there were approximately 10,000 individuals on the national list. Today, there are 120,000. In the state of Illinois, there were over 5,000 individuals waiting. The vast majority of that 5,000 are waiting for kidneys, and African Americans constitute almost two-thirds of that list. Yep. And you heard me say earlier that patients wait on the average of three to five years for someone other than a family member or a well-wisher to call and to give them a, an option at a, a donation. So it's imperative that they that our viewing audience does, just as you asked, and that is register. Please register to help someone else. So I think we have a caller, Jack. Let's see what, what question we get. Go ahead and uh, patch him in. Good evening. Hi, Let's talk donation me? with Gift of Hope. How's it going? Oh, it's going well, thank you. Can you hear me? I sure can. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so I'm actually calling on behalf of another caller who uh, couldn't get through. Um, her name is Betty, and she wanted to ask you, Olivia, uh, what is it that at such a young age got you um, involved in something like organ donation? So, yeah, that's, that's funny. Thank you so much for that question. Um, and as I guess people can tell, I am only 24 years old. Um, and I've been working with Gift of Hope since about February of 2017. So what got me into Gift of Hope was uh, my mom was actually diagnosed with end-stage renal failure when I was a junior in college. We had no idea what was wrong. My mom had never really been ill before. Um, and next thing you know, she's in the um, ICU 
um, on a ventilator and they don't know what's wrong. Um, in the coming weeks, we found out that she had kidney failure and that she would indeed need a transplant in the next couple of years, if not, you know, um, before that. So that kind of started um, our journey with kidney failure and then um, through a very close friend, um, we were introduced to Jack Lynch mm. um, at Gift of Hope. So um, he brought us in and um, helped my mom to be a volunteer and my mom brought me in to be a volunteer um, in which during that time we really learned a lot about the process, a lot about the industry, a lot of things that we just had no idea we that we did not learn from the doctor. We didn't learn in the dialysis center where she was going three times a week and Gift of Hope was really just a resource in which she could find hope that there was um, yeah. a cure for what she was going going through um, and that there were people that had gone through it and, um, and there were people that looked like us yeah. that knew what was going on in that industry. Um, so that's kind of what really brought me into it. While I was in college, I did a couple of um, group projects um, in regards to organ tissue donation and getting that conversation started on my campus down at the University of Missouri. Um, and then once I graduated, my mom kept telling me, apply for Gift of Hope, apply for Gift of Hope. I think you'll be great. Of course, like a, a millennial, I didn't listen um, until it kind of just, um, until God made it happen. That's really yeah. what I believe. God God moved the pieces around um, and made sure that I was in the right place in the right time and sharing my story and, and, and my journey with my mom um, and putting me in front of the right people like Jack Lynch and my manager, Marion Shuck. Um, and next thing you know, uh, I have a job as a community outreach specialist. Um, so I don't know, maybe Jack can answer what he saw in me, but I, I mean, I do think that it's very important that um, not only myself, but my peers and um, all millennials understand this topic and this process. We are a very giving group of people. We are a group that's not likely gonna say no to being an organ donor if we understand the need in our community. So my mission, I feel like it's my purpose and my mission in life um, to you know, reach out to my peers and say, hey, this is all you gotta do. Have this conversation with your family, have this conversation with your friends and your loved ones, and you know, we can make all the difference. I think it's important to point out that uh for someone such as myself, as a healthcare professional and involved in various aspects and going back and doing a fellowship at um, Howard University and then subsequently doing my final training at the University of Chicago Department of Surgery. Someone who has been able to navigate and get through the various barriers that could come up and yet survive it and has an opportunity to give back in a professional way such as this area of medicine. My point is that to those of us who much is given to, much should be expected Definitely. of us. Definitely. And so to reach back and to be bringing these younger folks on and making sure that I and others like myself set a path so that they can go down and make it better you know, it's a little cliche, but then my living isn't in vain. I've done something to, we're doing things that extend life, but we're also helping that next generation to, to prosper and to be a positive in our community. That's the legacy that we hope to serve. Definitely. So we have a couple minutes left. Um, if you want to give us a call at 312-738-1060, you can definitely ask us any questions. Um, and also, we just want you to remember um, to register as an organ donor if you're not already on your driver's license. Um, many people have registered with the Secretary of State. When you go on into the DMV, they ask you, would you like to be an organ donor? If you said yes, it's already taken care of. You don't have to re-sign up for the list or anything like that. If you did not say yes, or if you felt like you were not at the, at the DMV, you can definitely go on over to giftofhope.org, listed right here in your screen, giftofhope.org, and it'll take you 30 seconds to register. So I think that um, this has been a really, really good conversation, and I mean, I learn I'm so impressed. much from you every day, Jack. I'm impressed with you. Thank you. I'm I impressed. appreciate it, and I appreciate you. And as you know, you. I don't give compliments. That's, uh, that's a real observation that I'm proud of. You've come a ways, but there's so much more that folks that are in my position uh, can do. And so each day we try to learn from these younger folks and we try to develop a path that they can go down and just, again, improve on. When that is done and they hand that uh, pathon off to someone else down the road, we've got to do more of that. 
So it doesn't matter if it's medicine or if it's being a ditch digger. Be the best. Serve your purpose. God has a purpose for everyone here on this earth, and you just got to listen and, you know, do what you think is best to serve our community. So, and work. And work. So don't forget, if you haven't already, go on over to giftofhope.org and register to be an organ donor. You can go to giftofhope.org and register to be an organ donor. Also, if there are any events going on in your community that you think would be a, a great place for us to share the message and the mission of Gift of Hope and of organ and tissue donation, you can email me at, o, at ofox at giftofhope.org. Again, that is ofox, O-F-O-X, at giftofhope.org. And we are willing, ready and willing to come out to all events in the community um, and support and share this mission and this message anywhere um, that our viewers see fit. So, last comment? Last comment. Um, I think that, uh, let's see. We had my mom on here last week. She was awesome. And we talked a little bit about um, about the knee. Uh-oh, wait, let's get this last caller in before, uh, before our minutes are out. So go ahead and put the caller through. Hello, hello. Hello, my name is Colin Lewis, and I'd like to ask if you guys would reach out to baseball leagues and stuff and tell them about organ donation. Oh, yeah. Kids. So thanks for calling, Colin. Um, I definitely think that baseball leagues would be a great place for us to do some outreach. Sure. Um, we talked about working with millennials, um, and we can't forget about the youngsters. So sharing this mission um, is very important for young people to understand at an early age, and not only to understand about organ and tissue donation, but understand about keeping ourselves healthy and being aware of what's going on with your medical situation and mm -hmm. what's aware with your what's going on with your body. Um, so yes, Colin, we can definitely do outreach with baseball teams. Another great idea would be that baseball teams come on um, and reach out to me at ofox of, at giftofhope.org and you guys can come out and volunteer with us. Um, we do a lot of great events throughout the year um, and so baseball teams would be awesome to help Absolutely. us volunteer and outreach um, in, in, in your own community. So we'll get this next caller. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Um, I just was calling in and wondering how, as a community member, I can get more involved with what Gift of Hope has going on. I'm really impressed with the organization. I just want to know if you guys had anything to offer for community members. Yeah, definitely. So not next week, but the week after that, we're actually going to have our volunteer coordinator and the president of our volunteer yeah. um, committee um, come on and talk about how you can get involved with Gift of Hope. But as I mentioned, anything that's good in the community, we love to be involved sure. in. So reach out to us at giftofhope.org or at my um, email address, ofox at giftofhope.org. We can provide um, educational material. We can provide fun giveaway things um, for whatever events you have going on in the community, whether it's your your church, your school, um, anything that's going on, another community organization. We love to be community partners. So Absolutely. What do we you look think, forward Jack? to the call from you. We definitely do. So um, we're going to have to wrap up here. I'm not sure if we have one more caller, but I don't think we're going to have time. So um, like I mentioned a couple times throughout the show, thank you so much for joining us. And our call to action this week and every week is that you register to be an organ donor if you're not already on your driver's license. If you, had not, if you have not said yes at the DMV, you can go on over to Gift of Hope. Dot org and it'll take you 30 seconds to register or else you can wait till you go renew your driver's license at the DMV and say yes then but just remember everyone this is really a gift that you're leaving to your family this is the the last last gift that you can leave if you um, consider it like a will um, this is one less thing that your family has to argue over and fight over if it's your wish to leave a, a lasting legacy on this earth and help um, somebody live their life a little bit better um, and, you know, recover from their illness and really get a new chance at life. Definitely register to be an organ donor. And I really, really want to thank my boss, uh -huh. my mentor, and my friend Jack Lynch for coming in tonight. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And show me how it's done. This is only my second Can TV show. You're a Can TV veteran, so I really, really appreciate you coming out and helping me tonight. And um, I look forward to what us and our team are going to do. The struggle goes on. The struggle goes on. Thanks for joining Let's Talk Donation with Gift of Hope. I'm Olivia Fox. See you next week at 630.